the player piano was one of the first ways people were getting recorded piano music in their home. They're a regular piano, but they also, as they say, have an extra set of fingers. So you can play them regularly, but also you can put in the paper roll and then get the recording by the original performer. So we are at my family cabin in Richmond, Minnesota, and this is our family piano. It's been in the family since my mom and uncles were kids. My grandparents would have dance parties in the basement. My uncles would, would pump the piano and they'd get little tips here on, on, on the side of the piano. People would give them, give them some money for pumping. This piano is a Packard built by the same company that made the cars, and it was made in 1918, and it's really a, a well-built piano, which is nice, because they're not all created equal. Uh, I think my grandpa and uncles refinished it sometime in the 50s or 60s, and it, it turned out pretty good. About 10 years ago, I took it on to repair it. The player system inside had kind of given up the ghosts, and I refurbished it and got it going again. I certainly didn't have much of an idea what I was getting into when I, when I tore into this. Um, I was working as a mechanic at the time, but before I started on this one, I thought, okay, this is a family heirloom, I could potentially wreck it. So I got a piano online for cheap and kind of learned some of the techniques on that. That way, in case I wrecked it, I wasn't going to ruin the family heirloom. I met a man who had a shop in Minneapolis named Donald Barton, and he eventually took me on uh, part-time after I got this one going and saw I had the knack, or I was, I guess you could say, the right kind of crazy to have the, the fortitude to go through one of these. And I worked part-time with him for about seven or eight years and really came to enjoy the work. It's a neat mix of mechanical engineering and woodworking and a little bit of history and, and of course working with antiques and the music aspect of it. And I liked all those disciplines coming together into one trade. Between the like the late teens and, and to the mid 20s, over 85% of pianos being sold in the U.S. were player pianos. Over a million were made back in the tens and 20s. So it was a lot. I'm imagining there's quite a few left, and I would say the majority of them don't work. A lot of them are getting thrown away, which is too bad, but I already have five or six of my own. I, I can't save them all, but at least I can save some parts to use them in future restorations and help get other pianos going again. So we are in Anoka, which is the Halloween capital of the world. It's not very well advertised, but, but we do our best. I grew up watching the Munsters, so I was always fascinated by things a little, little off-putting and a little macabre. I bought the hearse about nine years ago and have been working on it here and there. I drive it around in the fall around the Halloween capital of the world here and I get a big kick out of it. <laughs> yeah, I'm confident that this thing turns more heads than a Corvette. I mean, it's like a train wreck, really. You can't not look. See, look at that guy's actually stopped walking. He stopped walking and he's looking at it. How are you doing? <laughs> I 
I've been in business just a year now and I've got nearly 100 customers, which may not sound like much when you're a coffee shop, but when you're working on pianos, to me that's a lot. I've got a backlog of a few months of, of work and I'm surrounded by pianos that I'm working on, so that's keeping me busy. I'm 29 years old and oftentimes I'll get a call from a customer, they haven't met me and they'll schedule a house call and then I show up at their door and they say, whoa, I thought you were gonna be an old man. And I tell them that I'm, I'm working on that, but not there yet. Every restoration job is different, every repair is different, so perfecting it is, is kind of what keeps me going. Each job is just leading on to the next one. As I am tearing into the piano and opening it up to do the restoration work, I uncover so many things like handwriting, you know, when it was tuned last, tunings going back to the 20s, finding people's signatures, people I'll never know, gold stickers from kids' sheet music, taking lessons and finding toys, and this other end of that, finding dead mice, all sorts of things. I really get to know them rather intimately, whether I like it or not. I've been interested in welding ever since I was, oh, maybe 14 or so years old and was always tinkering in my parents' garage and have been doing a lot of art sculptures out of found materials and have been populating my garden with, with pieces that I made over the years. And I've sold some, but generally just do it for fun. The garden in my backyard I, I put in maybe five or so years ago just to have plants around uh, my sculpture just to kind of make it look a little more at home, but I've really enjoyed gardening and I've been more interested in native plants and it's really, it's really filled in. Working for myself has been really nice. It's allowed me to have time to, to do my art and, and work in my garden. And, and also be able to do something that I really enjoy and kind of set my own path on that to a degree uh, as I start my own business and, and enter out on my own. As a kid growing up watching the piano, it was like a ghost was playing the piano. You know, it's very captivating and very magical. And I think that that sense of wonder that that instills has really stuck with me. And I do see that with a lot of the customers when they bring in a piano that they grew up with. Once I get a piano going, there's a sense of revival or you know, bring it back from the dead and hearing it come to life again is pretty neat. I really feel that in a way pianos are living, breathing things. They respond to deterioration from time, they're sensitive to humidity, they're always changing. Every one of these pianos has a story. So many of them have been all over the country, it's amazing. It was often the thing people took with them when they moved, even though they're so heavy. And I think the fact that a piano is so heavy, really, it really anchors it in people's lives. And same with the hearse, these things live on in our lives. It's, it's really neat, the stories and the things that we go through. Whereas we can heal from things that happen to us in life, the pianos generally don't, you know, without somebody fixing them. So it's amazing how much can happen to something in a lifetime. And I get to kind of uncover that working on them. Postcards is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. Additional support provided by 
Margaret A. Cargill Philanthropies. Mark and Margaret Yakel Juline on behalf of Shalom Hill Farms, a retreat and conference center in a prairie setting near Wyndham, Minnesota. On the web at shalomhillfarm.org. Alexandria, Minnesota, a year-round destination with hundreds of lakes, trails, and attractions for memorable vacations and events. More information at explorealex.com. The Lake Region Arts Council's Arts Calendar, an arts and cultural heritage funded digital calendar showcasing upcoming art events and opportunities for artists in West Central Minnesota. On the web at lrac4calendar.org. Playing today's new music plus your favorite hits, 96.7 Cram, online at 96.7cram.com. 